Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the Data Driven Community Virtual Meetup. Um, today we are welcoming Elena Mar Marquette Ali, um, who is a professional speaker with 20 years experience. Um, she's um, a leadership in coaching, grouping facilitator and um, faculty member. Elena is the pre president of a lead consultant and a lead consultant with Marquette Consulting. Uh, please be aware that this session will be recorded. Uh, for those who are new uh, to the session, to our events, we are the Data Driven Community. We essentially comprise of weekly meetups, which is a cloud data driven user group, um, and then also the Future Data Driven Summits, which are a yearly um, conference that we hold. Um, all of this is completely online, so accessible to absolutely everybody, so everyone um, across the world, and we have some really amazing speakers. So. We have uh, essentially upcoming uh, event of the Future Data Driven Summit 2024 that will be happening on uh, September 25th. If you go to our website, uh, you will essentially see all the details of that there. Um, and also you will be able to look at all of the upcoming sessions for our weekly events. So today we have Elena, but you'll be able to go on there and see um, everything we've got coming up in the next few weeks uh, and sign up for anything that you would be interested in. So um, the data driven community essentially comprises of uh, Jean Joseph. Um, he is uh, the lead board member. He is the original founder. And then we have Ronan Ariali. And then finally, myself. So I'm quite new to the board. Um, I started um, a few weeks ago. I am a Microsoft AI MVP, a data and AI um, resident solution architect currently working um, with Databricks and also a consultant. If you want to follow me, um, I am on LinkedIn and I am on Twitter. So feel free to, to connect and, and, and reach out. So uh, that's the, the three of us, we're the board members. So if you have any questions about, um, about the data driven community, uh, please reach out to any of us and we will be happy to help. Now, I have some really exciting news. Um, the registration is now open for the Future Data Driven Summit 2024, which is on the 25th of December, 25th of September this year. So um, we've got the QR code there um, that you can scan to be able to go on, go and actually register for the event. We are all really excited. We are going to have some amazing speakers. So please reserve your spot. Um, start reserving your spots now. And, and we are super excited. But also, if uh, you are interested in speaking, uh, you can also um, register to speak as well. Everybody is welcome, um, regardless of experience. Please do um, submit sessions if you've got something you're really passionate about and want to speak about. So whilst um, you are attending our event, uh, please turn off your video on your microphone. Um, please feel free to use the chat during the meeting for questions and discussions as well. Um, we are following the Microsoft Code of Conduct. Please be respectful to each other during the meeting. So you're welcome to use the reaction buttons um, as, as the session is happening. But again, please do not unmute yourself. Uh, please don't distract the speaker. We will be moderating and um, forwarding any questions to her that we find in the chat. OK, so I'm now going to hand over to Elena uh, to present her session to us. Well, thank you, Anna, for that great introduction. It is a, a fun opportunity to be able to present today. Um, just to let everybody know, this is new for me presenting this slide presentation on Microsoft Teams. So if there's a few glitches, I apologize, but I'm going to attempt to share my screen here and get us started. I want to talk to you today about one of my favorite topics, which is leadership. So just a little bit about me. I, again, I'm a leadership coach, speaker, expert. Um, I have been in leadership roles for the past 22 years. I'm also a healthcare executive, which is where I've had a lot of my experience at. So I've worked in the hospitals. I've also been a nursing home administrator. 
I have taught a lot of business and professional courses at a few universities in the Midwest part of the United States. So teaching on leadership and marketing, um, business acumen, strategic planning. And the fun note about me is that I am also currently a pageant queen. So I am the current Miss Ohio woman, which is new and fun. I had never done that before. But uh, I will be in Columbus, Ohio this weekend, turning in that title. And what's fun for me when I do these presentations in, in person, I usually have my crown and my sash kind of sitting up front with me, which always makes for um, a good conversation piece as well. So I apologize that I haven't been able to share my um, beautiful um, crown and sash with you. So you'll just have to believe me. But I, I will have the opportunity to crown the new Miss Ohio woman this weekend in Columbus, Ohio. Last thing I'd like for you to know about me before we get started is that I am an avid Star Trek buff. So that's one of those little things that I like to share. So if I happen to slip into too much Star Trek references, um, that is the why. So let's go ahead and get started. Now that you know a little bit about me, I'm hoping that um, you will um, be more interested in what it is that I have to say. So our first slide here is a question I like to ask, are you attractive? Now, I'm not talking about what you look physically like because I know that everybody in the room is an amazing human specimen. But what I am talking about is your ability to attract people and things to yourself. So a lot of what we talk about here in magnetic leadership revolves around the concept of magnets. So something I left off the list and I intentionally do so for, for for an a stint in my career, I also taught eighth grade earth science. And uh, being in science, I became very fascinated with magnets. Now, we're all familiar with magnets and magnets have three particular properties. The first property with magnets is their ability to attract, right? So we know that if you have a, a, a south end of a, a, a magnet with the north end of a magnet, they are going to pull together. They are going to attract. But then we also have the repulsive property of magnets. And that means that they are pushing away. So like ends and north to a north, it's going to push away. So my second property dealing with magnets are their ability to repel. The third most interesting uh, fact about magnets is their directive property. So when we talk about the directive property of magnets, think about if you're out um, um, hiking, right? You have this little device in your hand that helps you know where north is. And that is called a compass. Now, the way the compass works is there's a bar magnet. There's a free hanging bar magnet in that compass. And because of the poles um, in the earth, the bar magnet, when it's hung, when it's freely hanging, will always point due north. So that, my friends, is the directive property of magnets. So, why am I talking so much about magnets? Well, because today we're talking about magnetic leadership. We're talking about an individual's ability as an exceptional magnetic leader to attract the right people to the team, then to also pull the best out of them, right? That's the attractive part of our magnetic leadership. Then we talk about the repelling. So the repulsive part of magnetic leadership is your ability to help mitigate drama or all other types of non-conducive activities amongst the team. Directional. 
Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. As a magnetic leader, one of your third property is your ability to point the team due north, right? What do we think about when we think about north? That's um, success, that those are gains, that is just moving us in the right direction. So a magnetic leader has the ability to motivate a team in a positive direction. Now, the reason I find this topic so, so, so um, important to all of us is that here in this slide, it's in the fast paced and competitive world of business, leadership, particularly magnetic leadership, has emerged as a defining trait for successful professionals. In every industry, whether it's healthcare, tech, government, We've seen a lot of people who, or a lot of us, let's say a lot of us, have ended up in lead roles, but without having any management experience or training. We haven't been trained on how to work with people, how to engage with people, how to encourage people, how to motivate people. But sometimes we've received our um, promotions because we've done our jobs well. And so we continue to move people up the ladder or the ranks because they're good at what they do. But statistics show that 75% of individuals in leadership roles, in management roles, say that they have never received leadership or management development and training. So all of our companies are saying, hey, now that we're looking for new people to add to the team or looking for people to promote, we're realizing if we don't have the right leadership in place, our teams will suffer, our organization will suffer. So that's why we are discussing today magnetic leadership. OK, so stick with me. Super basic. There are four core principles of magnetic leadership. Authenticity. I'm not sure we're seeing your slides at the moment. You're not seeing my slides at the moment. Hmm. Says is sharing. A Did you see the last one? No, I think that you share the wrong uh, screen. Hmm. We are, share we are seeing uh, the teams. You're seeing teams. Let's try this. Let me stop sharing and let me try to share again. Are you seeing a turquoise slide that says core principles of magnetic yeah. leadership? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah. Good, thank you. Um, great, okay, back on track, everybody. Core principles of magnetic leadership. Authenticity. Are you who you say you are? Then there's vision and inspiration. Do you have a clear cut vision for where you'd like to see yourself and the team go? And does that vision inspire everyone to go that way? Now, some people stop me at this point um, and they say, well, Elena, I'm a team of one, right? I'm a consultant. It's just me. Then I say, do you have a vision for where you are going, for where your consulting is heading? And does that vision inspire you to get up every day and keep um, giving the best of yourself every day. Then we have emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is um, a key factor. It's a, it's a key factor because we are dealing with people and people have emotions. So as a magnetic leader, you have to always be in control of your emotions and empathetic to the emotions of others. Then there's adaptability. Core principle number four of magnetic leadership is adaptability. Can you handle change? 
All right. Is everyone seeing a, a new screen that says authenticity? Yep. Okay, great. We're good. So, fantastic. First core principle of magnetic leadership, authenticity. Are you who you say you are? Are you showing up every day presenting yourself or are you giving people a facade? So why is authenticity important? When we're working with another person, they want to know who they're working with and if I am being true, then I'm able to build trust with the person that I'm working with. And we know that with every relationship, one of the most important things is, do you trust this person? So in order to be authentic, I have to be aware of myself. So right here, I kind of like to talk a little bit about Jabari's window, because some people will say, well, Elena, like, uh, I don't know if I know myself. What does that mean? Well, if you've taken a course in psychology, I think, you may have been introduced to a theory called the Jabari's window, which really looks about, looks at self-awareness, transparency, consistency. So Jabari's window is, picture a window pane with four panes. There is the open window. So the open window are the things I know about me and the things you know about me. That's the I know, you know. Those are things about ourselves that people on the outside can easily see and we're very much aware of. The second window is a hidden window. So those are I know, you don't know. Those are things about ourselves that we know, but we really don't tend to share those things with people. Now, we obviously don't want to share everything, but sometimes it does good to a relationship to expose something about yourself that's not particularly obvious because it allows us to maybe relate to someone, whereas they will then um, be able to connect with us a little bit more. So, there was an incident when, um, you know, I, I will, I suffer from anxiety and well, you know, that presents sometimes with uh, me, I need to sit down because my heart rate is racing. I can barely breathe. I'm getting weak and da, 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 da. It kind of mimics what, um, say a heart attack would look like. Well, if I'm working in healthcare, because I was, I'm working in healthcare, if I have an episode like this, then and my team is going to boom, up into action and like, uh-oh, I think we're, she's having a heart attack. It was something that I didn't necessarily want to share. It was a hidden thing. But then I realized, you know, I don't want my team to be scared if they ever see me in the middle of an episode. So let me share this part of me with them because I want them to know how to react and I want them to not be afraid. And so that presented opportunities for staff to open up like, oh, you know, I, I suffer from the same thing, too. I felt like I was all alone, thus and such. And so we're able to strengthen our relationship. Right. But then also when they see me in an episode, then they're, Elena, go go back to your office, sit down. We're going to bring you some water, focus on your breathing. You know, we're just going to check on you. That is the hidden and why. It's important for, for us to sometimes share some things that we hide about ourselves. Now, the next window we talk about is, you know, I don't know. That's the part of, the, Elena, part of our window. Where the, sorry to cut you, Elena. Uh, yes. Please notice on your screen, please notice that there is a bar that's saying uh, stop sharing and hide. Mm-hmm. Yes. You should. Should I hide if it? You will, exactly. Because it's uh, okay. everyone can see it. Now, if I okay. already stopped you, so just one sentence uh, to everyone. Please remember that you can use, you are welcome to use the chat during the session, question, discussion, everything. Uh, everyone can use the chat. And I already uh, added all the links that uh, Anna spoke about 
uh, at the opening. Yes, please feel free. If you have comments while I'm talking, throw those in the chat. I would love if we could make this a back and forth. I have a lot to say, but what's most important for me to know is that what I'm saying is landing, or maybe you can relate, or maybe you have something to share. So use that in the chat. You want them to stop me, you want to make a comment, or you want to ask a question, please do so. Okay, so there's the window that you know I don't know. Those are things that we're not always aware about ourselves, but the people outside of us recognize. With this window, uh, the story I like to share there is I, it's funny, because I didn't realize I have a tendency to cut people off while they're talking. See, I'm just a natural born storyteller. So anything that you mention to me, I've got a great story or a great anecdote to share. Unfortunately, I would cut people off while they were talking to me. So finally, one day someone said, Elena, can I finish what I'm saying first? And I said, sure, sure. And they said, well, you know what? Let me let you know, you have a tendency to cut people off when they're talking. I was totally unaware. It was, it was just a force of habit, didn't think anything of it. But then bringing that to my attention, I could have been egotistical and said, so what, I'm a great storyteller. But as a magnetic leader, okay, let me adjust. Because what's happening is when I cut people off, they think I'm not paying attention to what it is that they're saying or don't value what it is they have to say. It can then come across like maybe I'm a know-it-all or whatever, you know, whatever other thoughts or feelings or emotions they can have. But as a magnetic leader, I'm going to respond when you point something out to me about myself that I'm not aware of, because in me addressing it, I now can become a better leader. So now, great, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna make sure that you finish your point and then I will share with you what my thoughts were. Now you've had the opportunity to get everything out, you feel heard, you feel respected, and now our line of communication has been strengthened and opened, okay? That's the part of the window, you know, I don't know. And as magnetic leaders, when people point out things in that window that you're not really aware of, put your ego, put your pride aside and address it so you can relate better to the team. Now, the last window is the unknown. That means things I don't know and that you don't know. So then you say, well, Elena, how do I find out about myself if I don't know and the people around me don't know. Well, the way we uncover those things is to try new experiences. There was a time when I wasn't a teacher, I wasn't a speaker and somebody asked me to do a presentation and they said, well, you're a speaker, right? And I said, no. Well, do you like to speak? Um, you know, I'm a great storyteller, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But let me give it a shot. Gave it a shot, realized this is where I fit in. I love educating. I actually love speaking. I'm trying to get really good at it. But this is how I address the I don't know, you don't know part of the Jabari window and find out things about myself as a leader. So the next time someone says, hey, you know, do you think you could put this spreadsheet together or can, can you lead up this project or can you do this presentation or would you like, um, would you like to try sushi? Don't say, I don't want to, I've never done it before. Try it because you might find that it is a innate skill that you have or Maybe you like sushi, you don't know, give it a try. So once we really understand who we are and we take the time to learn ourselves and become self-aware, then we can better navigate how we are going to be our authentic selves, how we're gonna to relate to everybody else on the team and then do so in a consistent manner. Consistency is key. If I am this way, if I act this way with this person, 
I need to act this way with that person. I said it in on a presentation years ago, and the presenter said, your team should always feel like they are your favorite. And so that means that nobody on your team should, um, should not feel like they're not your favorite. Now, Elena, I got some different personalities I deal with. I understand, I do too. But I'm learning how to be my authentic self, but support each individual in a very fair and consistent manner so that they all feel like they are my favorite. Because there's nothing worse than thinking, well, that's, you know, that person over there is a teacher's pet and they always have, um, you know, the, the, the team lead's ear. And I feel like they're picking on me and da, 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 da. Well, the reason our team members can walk away sometimes with those thoughts is because we're not being fair and consistent in how we relate to and treat the other members on the team. If I'm going to hold you accountable, then I have to hold you accountable. And if I make allowances for you, I've got to make allowances for this person. But still be your true and your authentic self. Second core principle we talked about, number one, was authenticity. Are you who you say you are? Number two is vision and inspiration. Now, a magnetic leader has to drive the team to want to, I say, play follow the leader. There's a saying that says, if you really wanna know if you're a leader, turn around and see if anybody's following you. If no one's following you, then are you truly a leader? I think you're just a person out taking a walk. So we have to have a compelling vision. What is our vision for the organization? What is our vision for the team? What is our vision for the department? Or I'm a team of one, Elena, then what is your vision for yourself? Where do you want to go? If you don't know where you want to go, then you're, you're not gonna get anywhere. And whatever that vision is, does it captivate the minds and the hearts and the energy um, of the other people on the team? Now, I've recently taken over um, a, a new nursing home facility. So I came in and I have to look at what, what the nature and the culture has been and present the new vision. Several years ago, I, I worked for a, a, a different organization and that was a family owned company. It had been started at that time about 50 years prior to me coming on board with Grandma Grace. Grandma Grace years ago had decided that she wanted to have a nursing home and care for the aging people in her community. And this was at a time when um, aging facilities were kind of called like old folk homes or the old people farm. And they just didn't seem to have a great connotation about them back then in those days. So Miss Grace, Grandma Grace said she wanted to have a facility that provided exceptional care for her neighbors and friends that were aging and to do so in such a way that the residents or the patients that lived there felt like they were spending some of the best years of their lives there. So she went around and she recruited a lot of people, a lot of her friends and a lot of her family in the community and they built and started um, Amherst Manor. Amherst Manor ran very well for a while, but unfortunately started losing a lot of money because Grandma Grace was so compassionate that she started doing a lot of things for people without any pay. And it came one day that the bank was going to pretty much shut everything down. So Grandma Grace, you know, made her, her team aware of the, the, the pending doom, you should say, of having to shut the doors of Amherst Manor. Well, all her nurses and her patient aides and her kitchen staff and her housekeepers, they all fundraised and took out notes 
and pulled from their savings to come up with the money to keep the doors of Amherst Manor open. Mrs. Grace's vision for exceptional care for the aging population resonated. Her love and her heart and her passion resonated so much with her team that they came up with the money to keep that business open. So much so that they have just celebrated 65 years in business. Grandma Grace is gone. Her, her sons are uh, much older and the grandchildren now run the organization, which at this point is probably 30 facilities throughout two or three states now. Hey, can you imagine the organization that you currently work for getting into financial troubles and you and the rest of the team came out of pocket, fundraised, took out loans, you know, baked spaghetti dinners in order to keep that company going. I, I think it's a far stretch. But this is a fascinating example of having a compelling vision. Her passion for work, what the work was that they was doing resonated so deeply with the members on the team. They did something which could be unthinkable, even unheard of. But I challenge us all, is the vision that we share with our team so compelling that they will show up for work on time, that they will give 100% of themselves, that they will come forward and sharing their new and innovative ideas that will only drive us further? Do they feel motivated to do that? A compelling vision effectively communicated to the team really brings the team together and draws the right people to the group. Don't you want to work for a company that you feel is going places? If you had to put a resume out tomorrow or look for, for, for an agency, are you, are you going to do your research? You hear like, oh, this, 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 this organization has bad ratings. Their customers are always complaining. Um, you know, the bugs never get worked out of the system, all the kinks and all that type of jazz. That's not where, where, where you would probably want to be. But if you found out about an organization that was really moving, that the team players and the customers and all the stakeholders believed in the mission and the vision of the organization, that's where you want to be. So as a magnetic leader, have a compelling vision for your team, for your organization, or for yourself, then effectively communicate it with everyone so that they know what it is, and then that will inspire them. You also have to be inclusive and collaborative in your approach. So we're open to conversation back and forth with the other team members to make sure we're all heading in the same direction. So this is the directional property of magnetic leadership. I have a quote on the screen by um, Kobe Bryant that says, the most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great at whatever they want to do. That's key for me also, because sometimes as magnetic leaders, there are people that will be on our team that maybe this isn't the best fit for them. Maybe we observe them and see that they have skills outside of our department that they could possibly excel even further in their careers if they joined a different team within the organization or maybe even a different organization. And a magnetic leader wants the best for each individual on their team. And sometimes we engage with the team member to say, you really excel in this area. Where do you see your career five years from now? Is this where you want to be? Is this the group that you that you want to be in? Because I'm observing that you have some talents that could really push that other department much further. So that that's what I like to point out there when it says 
inspiring people so that they can be great at whatever they want to do. Now, I hate to lose a team, a, a phenomenal team member, or sometimes they're not phenomenal team members. I'm not going to paint you a rosy color picture and say everybody on the team is always giving 100%. And when we've encouraged, you know, people that are not giving 100% are not giving 50%, sometimes as a magnetic leader, you need to have a difficult, or I give you permission to have a difficult conversation with a team member that says, I, I don't think this is the best fit for you. What else do you think you possibly might like to do? What motivates you? What pushes you? And be okay to say, you know what? I think maybe that's something you should pursue. And I wish you all the best of luck. So inspiration, uh, an inspiring vision is part of magnetic leadership because that allows us to direct the team. Here we go with emotional intelligence. There's the saying that says, people will never forget how you make them feel. Absolutely true. When you are an emotionally intelligent, magnetic leader, you can manage your own emotions and you have empathy for those around you. Sometimes we get so lost in what it is that we do, we're just thinking that people are um, task doers, right? I give you a list of things that I want you to do and you get them done. But um, I've yet to work with a Vulcan. And anybody else that might be a Star Trek fan knows that the Vulcan race um, has exceptional control of their emotions. Um, Un, un, unless they're going through, you know, pine far, okay? But other than that, um, they generally have excellent control of their emotions. Well, haven't met any Vulcans in real life yet. So a lot of us deal with a lot of emotions throughout our day. And a magnetic leader is able to be a great um, listener for our team members when they are stressed, um, when they're upset about something, um, we're able to take that in, listen to them, and provide the best advice to them as we possibly can because our team members have emotions. We, even when we work on computers, we do not work with cogs all day, every day, right? Even if I were to sit and build um, an entire system, I got to sell it to somebody. That's a person. I have to teach somebody how to use it. That's a person. Someone's gonna need to run numbers for me if I'm selling it, that's a person. So regardless of what you do, you have to deal with people. And so it's a great idea to be able to be emotionally intelligent when we are handling those around us. I was um, traveling to a conference uh, a few months back and I was traveling for the first time. My husband was going with me and we were taking our two-year-old. Had never flown with a two-year-old before. So when I was purchasing the tickets, I, I was kind of trying to figure out how to get him a seat. And I thought I had done everything correctly. But then when I made it to the airport, they said, oh, we don't have a seat for your baby. You, he's not a seated um, passenger. And I'm like, oh my God, like we got to get on this flight. I don't, I'm just so overwhelmed. And so I was standing at the counter and the lady said, don't worry. Her name was Michelle. Michelle says, don't worry. I'll get everything situated for you. So she's on her computer and she's handling everything to make sure that he was a, a seated passenger. And then I had this additional ticket and all that type of jazz. And me being so flustered and frustrated, I was just so appreciative of how she just um, calmed me down and handled the situation very well. So, um, when I was finishing up with her, there was another guy at the counter about three, four feet away. Um, his name is Bob, okay? So Bob says, oh, by the way, Elena, I've made, um, he said, I just changed your seats to put you and your husband's seat together. He said, I, I noticed that your seats 
weren't um, seated together and, and um, I, I changed your seating. Oh my God, like I, I almost started crying like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me because when I had purchased the tickets, I did like some economy basic or something. And so we couldn't pick our seats and I was just hoping that they put our seats together. But of course the, the, they did not. And they had my husband and I sitting separated and for either one of us to have taken that entire flight fully responsible for our two-year-old would have been a lot. And so I was like, oh my God, Bob, thank you so much. Like I hadn't spoken to Bob. He had just been standing there. I didn't ask for him to do that, but he said, you know, he saw a need and filled it without the customer even asking. I said, Bob, who's your boss? And he said, oh, Michelle, pointing to the lady who had originally helped me. So I go over to Michelle again, this is three or four feet away. I go over to Michelle and I said, Michelle, I want to commend Bob to you. He's fantastic. He did such a great job, yada, yada, yada. Now everyone's in earshot. There's only four feet between the two people. So I finished this um, whole monologue because I am dr dramatic. And Michelle says, well, thank you so much. But actually, Bob is my supervisor. So I smack my lips and I look back in Bob and I say, Bob, why did you tell me Michelle was your supervisor? And he said, because I believe that she will be one day. And I want to make sure that I'm helped make that happen. I was flabbergasted. You are, you're the manager. And you're, and you're telling me, your customer, that you believe so much in your team member that you would even like to see her be your manager, your boss one day? Do you know what that meant to me as a passenger hearing that? And do you know what that had to mean to Michelle, her hearing that? I would guarantee Michelle would do whatever Bob asked her to do because she knows that her manager believes in her and has um, so much concern for her. Who wouldn't want to work for someone like that? That was such a pivotal example for me of magnetic leadership on an emotional level. That's highly emotionally intelligent of him to be so concerned and to be so quick to share that um, in front of her. I wish the best of them luck and I would love to work for that person and I would love to be that person. So an emotionally um, intelligent magnetic leader understands the emotions behind working with a team, supporting a team. And when you do things like that, you're gonna pull the best out of people. They are going to want to do more. They're going to want to go above and beyond because they, they feel appreciated. They feel, F-E-E-L, they feel your leadership. And they can say, you care about me. Quite often, you know, statistically, when people leave their jobs, um, it's not about the money. It's not about the commute. You know, there is so much work remote nowadays anyways. And it's not about uh, the drive. It's not about the benefits. Um, it's not about a better offer. It's about the people that they work with. So in magnetic leadership, our team members, when we're expressing emotional intelligence in a, in, in, a, in a effective way, they feel cared for and that makes them feel safe. So people that feel cared people that feel safe don't leave for a dollar an hour um, more someplace else because they feel cared for and they feel safe. Last core principle of magnetic leadership. We're getting we're we're getting close to the end. Okay. Last thing with magnetic leadership is adaptability. Magnetic leaders have the ability to 
I say embrace change like a chameleon on roller skates. <gasps> when you are a magnetic leader, you are sometimes unfazed about the changes and the challenges that happen. And you engage the team um, with an open mind. Okay, team, how do we overcome this new challenge? How do we, we got this customer, they're asking a bit more from us than any of our customers ever had, or they have a system that's much more complex than we've ever um, supported before or built before. Anybody have any ideas? Now, you can't be a magnetic leader if you ride your ego all the time. You've got to have an open mind. You've got to be willing to listen to the other team members because that's really how we get forward, forward motion, right? The captain of the ship who's steering the boat can't also be on the back of the ship at the same time, can't be on the sides of the ship. They can't be, you know, in, in the boiler room. You have to be able to rely on the, your other team members and to do so with an open mind. Any suggestions, any changes, allow for diversity. You wanna have people with different ideas and thought processes on the team because if everybody thinks like you, you guys are always gonna end up with the same conclusion. Adaptability um, also shows up as a proactive problem solver. So sometimes, I, well, what I tell my team is, I'm here all day. You got a problem, bring it. But number one, don't call it a problem. And have an idea about how you think we can resolve it. And then let's pitch it to the team to um, flush things out. Don't bring me problems because when you start the sentence with, I have a problem, that's going to change your energy about how you're thinking about it and your response. That's going to change my energy and my response because ah, it's a problem. No. I, I've, I've got something I want to talk to, talk to you about. But here's what I was thinking we can do. So magnetic leaders are proactive problem solvers. They don't wait for the problem to get worse. And they're also thinking about what could become a problem and how do we avoid it? Then we don't allow our team to really focus on the concept of it as a problem. Here's the issue. How do we address it? We also, as magnetic leaders, are resilient. Again, going back to the word I used, unfazed. Don't allow the team to see you sweat. Why? Because when you sweat, they sweat. Now, I didn't say don't sweat. Yes, there are some issues that come to our door that are really challenging and it's okay to sweat. But don't let the team see you sweat. Be resilient, bounce back and continue to be assertive and positive moving forward. Magnetic leaders are continuously learning you don't know everything. You need to be able to continuously learn. And sometimes that's learning from your team members. I'm sure, back to my friends at the airline, I'm sure Michelle has probably taught Bob something. And Bob's the boss. But Bob has to be able to continuously learn. And that's even learning from the team members around you. And then we go back to having a strategic vision, um, a strategic vision amid change. Everyone wants to work in an environment that is positive, right? And when we do our job as the magnetic leader, people want to work with us. And I, and I want to share this with you too. The, the reason I, I speak on leadership, you know why I started talking about leadership? Because my team members along the way said, you are such a great leader. You need to go teach other people how to do it. And how I became um, a, a strong leader, a magnetic leader, is because I saw some very non-magnetic leaders. And I had decided I didn't want anybody else to have that experience. And so I took time to 
do a lot of learning, a lot of reading, a lot of listening, um, workbooks, um, asking for feedback. And I spent the time working on myself. And then I then I spent that after I spent that time working on myself, then I began pursuing um, executive level roles and the teams I worked with during those during those times said, Elena, you should you should go out um, and teach other people. So the reason I talk about magnetic leadership is because I want everybody everywhere in every organization to know what it takes for them to take on the responsibility of creating and cultivating a positive work environment where other people want to work. Magnetic leaders draw great people and then they pull the best out of the people that are already on the team because everybody wants to work in a positive environment. Now, we will have negative people. But when you create an environment that's so positive, the negative people, their voices become um, lesser and lesser because they don't want to stick out as a sore thumb. And sometimes um, our naysayers or our people that are just not as motivated, sometimes they find their way off of the team because they, they couldn't join along. And that's that comes with the repulsive property of magnetic leadership. Magnetic leaders understand the weight of creating a feeling in an organization that feels very supportive. Now, here's what I want to say here. Everybody is a leader. Now, wait a minute, Elena. Um, I'm, I'm not the team lead. So I'm just support. Okay, support. You are a leader. You do not have to have a title or a position in order to be a leader because leadership is a mindset. Leadership is an attitude. Leadership is not a title. Leadership is not a position. You can lead from wherever you are in your organization. At no point in time did I say that you had to complete certain degrees and get certain certifications in order to be a leader. You need to have the attitude of such. Lead from where you are. So if you are support, if you're a data scientist, if you're an analytics, are you doing what you do so well that you are inspiring other people to give their best? Are you expressing emotional intelligence with the other people on the team? Are you aware? Are you self-aware? Are you being your authentic self in your role? Don't wait to get that title to express leadership qualities. Be a magnetic leader wherever you are in your organization. And it is your responsibility to create and cultivate a positive work environment. Because the people with the titles will thoroughly appreciate the support too. Leadership, I say, is not a leader canoe. Um, it's not a leader surfboard. <laughs> it's, it's not leader roller skates. It's a leadership. And when we think of a ship, we think of a ton of people. Leadership takes all of us working together and exhibiting the qualities that we discussed today. I want to open this up for questions or comments right now because I've been talking, I've been listening to my own voice and that can get to be a bit much. So are there any comments, any questions, any anecdotes, anything you want to share about what we've discussed so far this afternoon? Uh, we don't, I don't think we have any questions at the moment in the chat. Um, I have a question though. Um, I was wondering, 
when you you take this approach with small companies, it's a lot easier. So I've seen this sort of attitude, um, magnetic leadership in small companies where you've got the same vision. And those first people that you employ are on board with that and they're part of that vision. Um, and you can see that they've got that close relationship with, with the directors. But as soon as that company starts to grow and grow and grow, it starts to lose a little bit of that soul um, and that togetherness. Um, I don't know if you've got any experience or advice on that as to how you can keep that culture within a company when it starts to grow? Well, you have to, um, or what I've, what I've done is make sure as a magnetic leader, magnetic leaders create magnetic leaders, which mm -hmm. is why I drive home the point about leadership not being a title, but leadership being an attitude. And so you deputize as as your company grows. Hey, I started a consultancy or, or business organization um, and there's five of us. And then that grew to 15. And then, like you say, we become larger and larger. It seems like it loses a little bit of its soul. But mm -hmm. we deputize individuals in that organization to be the cheerleaders and to be the magnetic leaders in their divisions to make sure that every nook and cranny of the organization feels the same way. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we engage, you know, we continue to engage with the team members, um, no matter how large we become, and then we require them to do the same, right? So we have our Midwest division. So we are a national, you know, company, but then the, the, we, we make time to meet with each division so that they can feel us and continue to see us so that they can emulate what it is that we're doing. So then Florida division should feel, should somewhat feel like the Midwest division because we continue to engage on each level and then deputize the individuals in those areas to continue to be the face of the organization um, from the magnetic leadership um, mindset. And then we also encourage everyone um, by um, having, um, you know, workbooks, leadership workbooks for the team members or mm -hmm. doing um, the, you know, online uh, uh, instructionals that are our reminders, our refreshers on magnetic leadership so that we remember to be encouraged to be that. You know, we get so bogged down sometimes. And again, our tasks that we don't really focus on these other qualities that are important too. So it's making sure to make the time for the staff to be re-engaged about these values. Perfect. So essentially it comes from the top and it needs to keep coming from the top. It has to keep coming from the top. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Thank you. Come on, I hope I didn't put everybody to sleep. Anybody else <laughs> have a comment or a question? See, this is good when I can see you all. So I do have a, a few other slides and I would like to be able to share that um, with the user group so they can push those a little bit forward, um, which continues to address the, the question that came was em empowering your team and strategies for how to delegate responsibility and encouraging the ownership, encouraging the ownership of the concept of magnetic leadership, okay? Um, and then some additional motivational tools and techniques. So we have, you know, we have personal development plans for those on our team that do have positions, but these are not position specific. So we also have resources for everybody on the team to work on their leadership skills. We will provide, you know, skill building workshops and a training program and you know, very important is just regular feedback. You know, how are we doing? I, I will go into organizations sometimes and team members haven't had a performance review for years. Well, how do I know how to become better if, you, if you're not, you know, if you're not giving me a vision, if you're not giving me a plan? Um, 
So I need regular feedback. I need regular feedback as a leader. So I may do an annual um, anonymous questionnaire out to the team. Give me a grade. How am I doing? Um, am I meeting your needs? Can I can can I do more? Do I need to, you know, adjust in certain areas? And then also being able to develop mentorship and coaching programs for the team members to continue to develop, you know, such skills. And I appreciate. I appreciate the group allowing me the space and opportunity to have this conversation. Because again, as I said, no matter what industry you work in, leadership will make or break the team or make or break the organization. Um, and so I think it's vitally important and I appreciate everyone who's joined us on the session today to listen or pretend to listen <laughs> to what it is that I have to say. And that speaks volumes on your personal and professional development. Clearly, you are a leader um, if you've taken the time to sit in on a session that I'm talking tech zero. I am not talking about anything technical. Um, if, if you want that, I'm not your girl. But what I can help you do is to make sure that you create an environment that will allow each and every one in the organization to show up as their best self every day. But it takes an entire team to make that happen from the leadership all the way across. And I don't say down. We think about hierarchical charts and we think top to bottom. I think across. And magnetic leaders, magnetic leaders um, have, have a sense about the team that we're equals. We're equals, you know? I, 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 I'm a human, you're a human. So we are fair across the board and I'm not better than you. No one wants to. No one wants to feel like they're less than. So I want to say thank you everyone for your time, for your attention. I thank you for the space and the opportunity to share with you from my heart what I believe it takes in order to have our entire um, uh, society feel less stressed. If we can eliminate some of our stress at work because we are all doing our part to create an environment where we want to be, um, I feel like we could do better as a society. We have a little bit of less stress. And so when I come into new teams, I'm saying, hey, hey guys, I'm here to help relieve some of your stress. As, as a leader here, I don't want to create um, things for you to have to go home and complain to your family and your friends and your pets about. I don't want you saying, oh my God, Elena never gets her reports done on time and I always have to pick up the slack and da 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 da, -da. No. Magnetic leaders, wherever they are on the team, help to alleviate the stress of the entire team. And there's too many other things in our lives, bills and traffic and all sorts of things that bring stress. Let's do our part as magnetic leaders to help eliminate as best we can some of the stress that we experience at work, at least about how we treat people um, and how we make them feel. So my name is Elena Marchetti Ali on the screen. I have ways that you can get in contact with me. There's the website. Um, it's Marchetti Consulting on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I'd love for you to uh, chat with me at any point in time, share your comments, share your questions, or even hit me up and say, Elena, that was the worst session I ever set through, and here's some pointers. I will take that as well. I just want to do my best. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen once I figure that out, and I will turn it back over to Anna. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Will the PowerPoint presentation be made available? Is there anywhere that people can access it? I will absolutely share that um, after the meeting with Anna. Thank you. Perfect.
Okay, thanks so much, Elena. That was uh, really, really interesting. Um, I have more questions, but we're running out of time. Uh, just a reminder again um, that the Future Data Driven uh, Summit on the 25th of September this year, the registration is now open. Uh, please reserve your spot, go to the website um, or copy the QR code. Um, we are also looking for speakers. You don't have to be um, a really experienced speaker, just if you're passionate about anything in the realms of data, um, please submit. Um, we would love to help you. And thank you uh, for attending the event. Um, if you want to find out about any future events that we are having for our weekly meetup, uh, please again visit our website. It's all on there. You can see everything that's going to be coming up over the next few months uh, and, and pick and choose which ones uh, are going to be interesting for you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Anna, do you have my email um, where I can send back to you the slides? Um, I don't have your email. Are you in contact with uh, Jean Joseph? I believe he messaged me, so I should be able to uh, just send those to him then. Yeah, if you if you contact him um, and let him know, either send him a copy of the slides or give him a location where people can actually access them. So normally when I do presentations, I have a GitHub repo that I will share a link to so people can actually download them. Um, whichever way works for you, uh, just so we can share that with, share it with the attendees and anyone who watches this back as well, because it's recorded, it will actually um, be put, put out there on our channel. So if anyone okay. watches this on a later date, they'll be able to access those slides. All right. Well, how did it go? Like when I unshared, I was like, oh, no one's even here anymore. Did everyone oh, drop no, people, off? People dropped off. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> OK, that's You're good. Yeah. yeah, that was really, really interesting. Thank you. Um, well, I'm, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> I found it interesting at some point. Thank you. Um, thank you. All right. Um, Have yeah, a great just, day, yeah. Yeah, just drop us an email and we'll get those slides shared with anyone who wants to see them. Okay, thank you. Okay, I sure will. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.